you're still tuning in on your home channel uh, NBC One and you are watching Daily Roundup. Now, if you invest in African Energy Forum in Paris kicked off today and is being hosted by the African Energy Chamber. The forum represents, uh, presents a unique opportunity for French and European investors to advance in investment in African reno renewable energy. Shiona Ndoyema, the acting managing director of Namcor and one of the speakers at the Invest in African Energy Forum now joins us all the way from Paris. Uh, good evening, Mr. Ndoyema, and welcome to the show. Good evening and thanks for having me on your show. Pleasure indeed. Uh, now, you are attending the Invest in Africa Energy Forum Paris edition. Um, what is this all about and what are the benefits for Namco and Namibia in particular? Well, thank you very much. So we are at the forum at the invitation of the Africa Energy Chamber and we're here alongside the Ministry of Mines and Energy and um, Namco being the custodian of the Namibian state's interest and uh, participation in all things gas, uh, in oil and gas in, in, in Namibia, we're really here to identify opportunities uh, for investment uh, across the entire oil, oil and gas value chain, especially in light of the um, recent um, exciting discoveries in Namibia, essentially. So our presence is really twofold. Uh, it's really to locate Namibia and indeed Namco's um, you know, role in the global energy sector in light of the discoveries and, of course, um, share some of the opportunities presented in the uh, upstream oil and gas space, essentially. We also have an opportunity to interact with, um, you know, um, international oil companies, um, you know, the service companies, and other NOCs, um, Petrosen, uh, which is the equivalent of um, of, of, of Namco in Senegal is also here and they're looking to go for first oil um, uh, next year essentially so uh, there is indeed an opportunity to exchange notes uh, uh, in that group uh, in that regard so 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 it's really a, a good opportunity for to exchange notes and identify investment opportunities and rub shoulders with um, you know European and uh, Western investors specifically and those that have traveled here at this uh, particular forum. Right. Now, what's very noticeable is that there is a global focus on investing in Africa's energy sector. Why would you say that's the case right now? Look, um, it's, I, I, can, I, can, I can only speak for Africa. Africa is a powerhouse. Uh, the world has become so interconnected and interdependent that uh, events in one part of the world have an impact on, on the, the other part and then affect, affect everyone else, essentially. And we've seen this play out in, uh, 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 you know, February 24, uh, 2022, when Russia invaded Ukraine. And uh, we saw the uh, over, you know, 7 million Ukrainians fleeing um, um, uh, Ukraine, essentially. And then the resulting sanctions imposed on R Russia sent economic shockwaves um, throughout the world. And, and these are still being felt today. Now, what effectively happens is that um, the... <laughs> Russian government is essentially a global supplier of, um, you know, the, the third largest supplier of uh, oil, producing about, um, you know, 7 million barrels of oil a day. And what happened when these sanctions were put in place, effectively, you had a situation where um, there was a deficit uh, in, in, in supply. And then basic economic, economics teaches us that when there is a um, a, a decrease in supply and, and demand remains unchanged. You know, you have a situation where prices skyrocket. Uh, so, so what this meant was that there was a uh, immediate shortage of, of gas in the market or Russian gas in the market. And of course, there was a more gradual but sort of critical sh shortage of uh, oil and other distillates. So what effectively happens is that, um, you know, the, 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 this pushed uh, global energy uh, players into a position where they um, had now to revisit, you know, um, exploration and producing assets abandoned uh, in the past, specifically in, in the in the West, to the extent where we are seeing a heightened increase in investments um, opportunities, uh, especially in, in Africa, in, in terms of um, pursuing uh, exploration and producing assets to really service the the deficit essentially. So what is what effectively happens is because of of, of this. Um, you know, um, heightened demand owing to this shortage, 
there's a scramble for 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 for, for, for fossil fuels and um you know you know africa is, is one such jurisdiction that has a plethora of oil fields that are untapped and uh, this makes namibia particularly unique because it comes at a a junction where we have these um unprecedented discoveries essentially so africa is a powerhouse and uh it, it's only befitting that we bring Africa to Paris, to the rest of the world, to have these conversations in, um, you know, the 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 city Paris, which is essentially um, uh, the 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 house of of the French, um, you know, international oil giant uh, Total Energies. Right, and you are of course one of the speakers at the forum. You can perhaps share with us about what, what something about your speech and uh, uh, what you are, uh, what some of the investment opportunities you are looking to present out there. Yes, of course, um, 600 million Africans live in, um, um, you know, a position where they haven't got access to power. So this was an opportunity to present Namco um, and, and its role in the global energy sector. Um, and then, you know, we, we speak of a funded, paced and just energy transition, uh, funded in the sense that the proceeds and derivatives that uh, come from, from oil will be used to fund an energy transition, essentially. And, um, you know, what we've essentially done, we've unpacked the oil and gas value chain to a certain extent uh, to ensure that, um, you know, we attract the right investors to come to Namibia to, to help us sort of harness uh, the hydrocarbon potential of Namibia uh, at the brink of, of these discoveries, essentially. So the idea is really to, 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 to position our oil and gas value chain. And secondly, um, you know, to, to share some of the farming opportunities in the Ludritz Basin, the Barbas Basin, um, and, and then really to point out to an extent that in as much as there's a heightened interest in the Orange Basin, where three of these major discoveries, the Total um, uh, discovery and, and, and the, 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 the Shell discoveries uh, essentially are located, uh, there are also opportunities in adjacent, in adjacent uh, basins uh, so that uh, you know, you know, there's an opportunity for farming for, for, for such acreage, essentially. So ours is really to position um, uh, Namco and then and, and by extension Namibia in terms of the acreage opportunities to farm in, into some of these uh, um, licensed blo blocks with a view of exploring and hopefully discovering and taking these to uh, our production. Right, and you did mention global energy, energy transition there, but uh, can, can you just tell us what these discoveries mean, I mean, in the midst of a global energy transition? On the one hand, you have a country with the potential of being, um, you know, one of the top 25, um, you know, oil producers by 2035, essentially. And uh, on the other hand, you've got a country that... Um, uh, you know, is ranked top five in terms of the cost of producing uh, a green hydrogen, looking at about 1.5 um, uh, US dollars, which gives you about 30, um, in excess of 30 uh, Namibian dollars to produce a, a, a kg of green hydrogen, essentially. So I think the, the tone is set at principal level, um, you know, uh, government has, has has pronounced itself that, um, you know, both fossil fuels and sustainable energies can co coexist. And uh, as for Namco, we're in the process of reinventing ourselves towards becoming a fully integrated uh, national energy company. And we're looking at how we can um, position ourselves to establish a globally competitive uh, synthetic fuels uh, industry. And this obviously presents an opportunity for Namco to actively participate in the energy uh, a transition narrative while also engaging in other exciting developments in the uh, oil sector. I think the reality is that 600 million people without access to power is justification enough to rally behind both fossil fuels and uh, sustainable energy solutions to fight energy po uh, um, uh, poverty. All in all, uh, the transition must be from uh, darkness to light before we can even think of transitioning fossil fuels to renewable energies. So the continent must decarbonize, uh, but we cannot uh, decarbonize Africa into deeper poverty. Right, you mentioned 600, uh, 600 million people to benefit uh, greatly from this, but the big question really is, 
generally, how can Africa benefit from foreign investment uh, in its energy sector, and what are the what what are what are the specific benefits that uh, you know can be expected in terms of economic growth, job creation, and improved access to electricity? But you mentioned electricity, of course, yeah. Yeah. So exploration, for instance, comes with um, a magnificent uh, uh, capital outlays. Uh, these are complex, ultra deep water, talking about 3000 meter deep uh, exploration activities that require sophisticated technologies and capital. So you need to, uh, to, to, to keep close to the market in order to attract the right capital for um, you know, these um, you know, uh, activities, essentially. And that's one of the reasons why we're here to understand when there are requests for cash calls. Um, so typically, you know, uh, Namco has carried interest in some of these um, uh, blocks. However, there they will come a time where we need to to, to fork out uh, a certain amount to, to cover, you know, our interest. So we are carried up until a certain point. So, um, you know, we need to stay close to, to the markets to, to develop those relationships to attract the required capital. So Namibia is expected to receive the highest exploration CAPEX in, in Africa uh, from um, uh, right there next to Egypt, essentially. And we've seen this play out with Total having dedicated half of its exploration budget to uh, Namibia um, globally. And uh, this, this this CAPEX is obviously likely to increase with, um, you know, some discoveries, envisaged discoveries that we foresee. And as far as the uh, impact of the discoveries is concerned from an economic perspective, we expect that these discoveries will essentially have... Um, uh, an impact by virtue of doubling Namibia's GDP in 10 years. Uh, so from about 14 billion to um, uh, 30 billion effectively. And, um, you know, over the, 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 the period from now up until about 2040, we're looking at the GDP contribution of um, 240 billion. Mm -hmm. So this can be broken down into, um, you know, uh, 150 direct, uh, indirect 57, and uh, and then and, and some induced benefits effectively. So so when we talk about induced benefits, we're especially talking about the spillover uh, derivative industries that are created uh, following uh, an increase in household spending in the economy essentially. Mm. And uh, from an a, a employ employment perspective, we're looking at peak uh, a creation of about three thousand six hundred jobs. And what we're doing at Namco is obviously uh, assessing. Uh, where it is we can participate across the entire value chain and uh, what sort of capacities are required so that we can uh, to onboard some of those skills that are required uh, during this specific uh, uh, development up until production. Acting, man Acting uh, Managing Director of Namco, Shewan Andoyema, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you for having me. All right, that was the Acting Managing Director of